Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and today is the second day of the trading, uh, the second trading day of the month for December. It's December 2nd. Wow, that was really tough to get out. Risk disclaimer in front of you everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any investment advice or recommendations. Uh, the video is for education purposes only. If the video is a little bit blurry, just give it a little bit more time for YouTube to render the version of the video. So I've got a lot of stuff to talk about. I will try to talk quickly as possible so this video is not too long but um theme of the day i would say uh decent or solid uh bounce day uh a lot of what i noticed and, and what we noticed in the trading room today was that a lot of value areas um did particularly well today uh we'll get into some of those names but um the performance for the averages uh s p was up 1.4 percent Qs was a little bit of a laggard for the day but still up uh, almost three quarters of a percent uh, the Dow is up 1.8% for those who still look at the Dow. Uh, IWM up 2.8%. Um, so real strong day for the small caps um, after um, some pretty nasty underperformance, I think, for like the last 10 days or something that I, I read. Uh, the VIX fell, um, was down 10% uh, for the day. Um, all over the place. I think at one point the VIX was trading back above 30, almost at 31 for the day. So even though the, the um, performance was quite good, uh, there was uh, definitely, a, it felt like some bumps in the road for the day. And, um, uh, you know, I, I still think that there, that there may be some short opportunities, um, but it's tough to really kind of short after a move that we've had. We'll see how this goes. So let, let me dig into a couple charts here. And, um, and then we'll kind of get to the conclusion. And I, I want to talk about, um, yeah, some observations. And then I've got about like, I don't know, a good 10 stocks to talk about. So like I said, I'll try to talk rather quickly. So you could see I've drawn a trend line, um, you know, which is new for my for charts, right? Number one, we're below value for the month, right? So we started uh, the month below, price action is below value. So we're kind of trending down. Um, but we're, you know, today was a, a bit of a fight back day. Now, did we really retrace anything that you that is like a solid footing for the day? Um, I don't think so. But one day, um, you know, from a positive standpoint and a negative standpoint, one day is not a trend, right? So we did come back from the lows, and it's just too early to know if this is going to be a lower high or if this is the start of a kind of retracement back up to the to the bottom of value, basically where we were yesterday. So again, this is really sh a super short-term view, but I do you know, I'm trading sometimes in the super short term. So I, I tend to look at that. Um, I tend to look at, uh, you know, obviously starting with the weekly chart, especially once we get to the end of the week. Um, I spend a lot of time on the daily chart and then a lot on the on the one hour chart for, for short term clues, which is where we are right now. All right, so we're, we're below value for the week. Um, notice that we did bounce on this uh, VPOC that we talked about, I think, at the end of day's video. I, I really didn't have much to say in terms of, you know, thinking where what was going to happen for today. Um, you know, so we, we did get a bounce, and, and we'll just kind of have to see um, to take it a one step at a time with this market right now. So that's um, S&P. Do I want to spend that much time on the Qs? Um, what I also would be interested in too, you know, no, notice that we got rejected firmly here. Um, you know, so a nice bounce in here as well off this uh, first downside VPOC, but um, we're still trading below value. And if we want to look at this as well, um, the Russell, which again, I view as really difficult right now, you could also draw a trend line in here too. So a nice bounce, but um, the short term trend is still is still down which is kind of crazy right you look at this um this candle for the day it's an inside candle believe it or not after a three percent day now let's go back to right so we know that we're dealing with some more volatile markets right now um let's talk a you know quick 30 seconds about the vix right the vix i, I don't like to chart the vix too much um i i really just kind of use the vix for face value and and um, trying to listen to what it's telling me, right? So a level of 27 or 28 right now in the VIX, right? That, what, first of all, what does the, the VIX measure? It measures short-term implied volatility, right? It measures implied volatility just in the S&P, right? That's it. It doesn't measure anything in the Qs and IWM, doesn't me measure any anything else. It's just telling you what 30-day um, options are pricing 
for the S&P, right? So it's currently pricing in, uh, it, it's, a, it's a 28 level, which is much higher than where we were um, a week ago versus as well as a couple weeks ago, right? So the market is still pricing in higher than normal volatility. Um, I would like to see that as a confirmation, um, get back under 22, even better 20, right? That would tell me things are returning to a bit more normal circumstances. Um, one of the things that I would like to see at the end of the day too is, you know, I've talked a lot about, um, I, I use little bits and pieces of, of different things, such as the such as the put call ratio, right? I like to see when, we, when there's a lot of, you know, after we've had a, a market dip, or a correction, right? As we're getting to the end of that, we usually see, uh, you know, fear really kind of creep into the market, right? I like to check the box in terms of, you know, I like to have three or four boxes checked to say, okay, is this extreme selling pressure? Yeah, we've seen that this week. Um, is there fear in this market? Well, the VIX is, you know, there's there's heightened um, the volatility, but that's the VIX doesn't measure fear as well as people like to think it does. Um, but I like to look at the put call ratio when people are really buying puts, right? When they're worry, really worried, they start buying puts like crazy. We have not seen that. I don't have the numbers for today. Um, and those numbers, they don't come out until they've been coming out later and later for some reason. But as of like yesterday, that was not a, a high reading in the put call ratio. So I would like to see it in this area, right? Now, again, we didn't get that area and we had a reversal in the market back on 10.4. But anyway, so those are some things that, that um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of pondering, thinking about. And, you know, I, I think being patient in this market and kind of, um, you know, you don't have to figure this this out. You know, this market is moving very quickly and evidence, you know, the VIX is at this 27, 28 level. That is evidence of the, the of how fast the market is moving, right? Um it's pricing and volatility and and yes there's more there's a higher uh, level of volatility than normal now let's talk about um so i i wanted to mention just a couple other things right there's so um earnings right i'm bouncing around here a little bit but let's talk about the good right and i think that's kind of how this market has been this year right we're getting close to the end to the end of this year and i'm starting to think more and more about you know the takeaways and and I've said this word a couple of times now, but the observations of this year, right? There's been a lot of stocks that have broken down and have continued to go lower and lower and lower. And then there's a number of stocks that have acted extremely well. Um, and it's, it's funny that some of the stocks that continue to act very well, nobody seems to talk about. Um, Twitter, I think, you know, and FinTwit, Right is something um, you know. I've spent a lot of time on the last couple of years, but you you have to be very like again. I'm not giving advice here, but you have to be very careful about Twitter. There are some excellent followers on Twitter, and there's so much resources that you could get from uh, from some very experienced traders. But you also have to be careful of very inexperienced traders who you know, it is what it is. They have a lot of followers. A lot of them buy their followers, and they will continue to give bad advice on Twitter, right? I will, I'm not, and again, I'm not going to point out anything, but you really um, have to kind of take the good and the bad on Twitter and really develop your own system, right? Um, so let me just finish with what I'm saying. Ulta, really good numbers, right? Marvell, really good numbers, right? This is another name that doesn't get that much attention. Look at Marvell up to $83, um, very nice. So that's that's going to be new new highs for MRVL. Um, again, a name that people don't talk about too much, right? So what does get a lot of attention, right? That I've seen, right? So Docu, um, and and I think this also kind of puts things in perspective, right? This stock is down um, to basically 170, right? Doesn't look like it's finding any buyers, right? This is a huge move, 233 to 170. Keep in mind though how much this stock has moved this year, right? So again, just helps to kind of put things in perspective. If you just go back to June and May or June, you know, five, six months ago, the stock was at 87. It went up to 314. That is a colossal move in terms of percentage. So yes, it's it's um, really getting hit after hours, but it's just getting back to the, to the June levels, right? It's a stock we've heard a lot about. But um, we were commenting about this at, at the end of the day. How many stocks have just continued to go to um, go break down and go lower and lower and lower? 
Let me give you an example. Let me give you a couple examples. Fastly, right? What has this stock shown over the last, you know, you know, months, right? It's shown that that it is in a downtrend, right? And it continues to go lower despite now there's not as much attention on this but you know for a while i would hear nothing about i would hear over and over about draftkings right and how Dra Dra draftkings is such a great buy right keep in mind the market is up 22% this year right but if you've messed in names that are breaking down and continue to go lower and lower you you've you've gotten you know probably banged up pretty decently right pen is another one Right, 117 down to 50. Right, what about? I keep hearing, I kept hearing a couple weeks about, ago about all the pot stocks, how great the pot stocks are. This is one of the worst groups, groups of stocks that you could be in um, with this price action. Right, we talked about here because I saw so many people quoting about how um, the pot stocks were going to be the greatest things. Right, they got a really good bounce in a downtrend, they continue to go lower. Guys, what normally happens with stocks? that are in downtrends. They stay in downtrends, but if they're going to reverse out of a downtrend, and I'm trying to think of an example and I don't have one for you in front of me, but stocks that are in downtrends for a long time, what they normally do is they go sideways for a good period of time. They base, and then they have the ability to turn higher in most situations, right? This, and I'm speaking to you from experience, not from somebody who just learned charting and learned what this indicator is and that indicator is two weeks ago and now they're an expert on it. Right? I could tell you, look at some stocks that have taken a long time to kind of regroup. Right? Most of them go sideways for a good number of months and then they start to go higher. Right? So you have to have patience for that. Right? And you have to kind of have um, a disciplined approach to doing it because if, if it's not confirmed that the stock is going sideways and starting to gear back up again, you're just dealing with a stock that's making more and more lower lows. Right? For example, here was where this peaked. Here's, here's a lower high, lower low. Right? That's the pattern. Right? This is very easy stuff. Right? But it gets confused by people, by people on Twitter giving you bad information and telling you how great a setup is in something. It's nonsense. Um, here's another one, right? Lower high, 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 lower high. Fake out, right? You got your bounce here, but you got a, a nice area to say, um, you know, take profits, right? And now back to another lower low. Could this bounce again? Absolutely. But it's it's probably going to spend it's going to need some time going sideways, right? Let me try let me try one thing if I can find something for you guys. Like tan at least, right? Stopped going down, and and went sideways, right? Look at over here. After a big downtrend in the solar stocks, right? All the way back here, we're talking about 2016. They got forgotten about. Right? They went sideways for, for look at all this time frame between 20 bucks and 25. Right? And then they finally got going. Here's a little bit of a false move, but it is you're dealing with such a more div, uh, such a difficult market. Okay, so let me get back on track. But you know I, I think that um, this year there, there's so many interesting things that went on in 2020. The fact that the s p is up 22 percent but there are so many stocks that younger inexperienced traders have been um, involved in and, and and sorry it's not just younger traders experienced traders and and you know people who have been involved in markets for a while do this too so I, I'm not picking on younger traders or inexperienced traders but I'm, I'm trying to help and say be careful about following the person who's got a hundred thousand followers uh, because it could be that they just bought their followers guys um, that is not showing experience right and skill um, so you know these are some takeaways developing a trading plan and a trading system right and I could say you know for the most part um, traders you know the, what I try to what I try to teach right is to stay away from names that are making lower highs right 
and 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 lower lower highs and, and lower lows and yes unless you're shorting right all right let me let me get to where there was some relative strength in this market all right and again talking about a name that nobody talks about look at sherman williams all right very methodical nice move up did make a new high today you know we'll keep an eye on this one this was a name i was in last week um i bailed on it last week just because i really cut um, you know, the majority of my positions and moved to cash. Um, so that's the story there. But I, I really thought what was interesting today was the home builders, right? And, um, you know, we were onto this pretty quickly. One of the traders at the Tribeca Trade Group mentioned the strength in um, Toll Brothers today. It just started to look in this move to the 20-day moving average. It's a real nice move. You know, maybe we've got some, some leadership going on for more than a day <laughs> than, you know, in this group. But um, I bought some Lennar today, right? I just started a position because I was late with this, but I think the chart looks pretty good in Lennar. Um, Builder was a trade. That was the that was one of my first trades for the day, right? So I took a couple targets because I don't trust this market right now. I don't trust this market with, I never trust this market, but especially with the VIX as high as it is. Um, ATKR, right? I just thought it might be a value day. Um, this name worked pretty well for me. Right, this is a. It didn't. It did not break out of value, which is a little bit of a bummer. So I'm going to have to really pay attention to this 20-day moving average um, in this. But um, but that was my first trade of the day. Was was um, was ATKR again? Um, you know, we I supply all charts and setups for these. Um, here was the other one, Builder. And again, I, I wasn't messing around with looking for home runs today. Base hits. Um, I actually tried um, shorting a little bit today too. Um, you know, just a name like Coin, which just looks weak. It looked weak to me. Um, I still think that this thing could go down to 271, but it's really tough to short after we've seen the volatility that that we that we have. Look at this thing closed on the lows. Um, I do think Coin can maybe get down to um, this 271 VPOC. So again, I don't have anything on. Um, you know, options are are difficult right now because of the implied volatility. All right, so you're dealing with a lot more expensive options. That's the one takeaway too, when you have a VIX over 20. Options are much more expensive than they normally are. Uh, Roblox did not go too far for me. Um, you know, I saw a little bit of calls on the tape. You know, I didn't want to play all in value today, um, but you know, looking at a couple other charts, right, in terms of sectors, right, the banks acted very well today. But is this just a bounce in the banks? to me very inconclusive now you could say hey well i'm going to use the 200 day moving average as my stop that's fine you know as long as you're sizing your trade appropriately and giving it a chance to work and being patient with it but um i would like to see it get back above the 50 day moving average it's also below value so um you know we'll continue to kind of watch some of these areas but i and i'm interested in some of these areas but uh, maybe more in, on a single stock basis and and again um, don't have to certainly don't have to um, participate in every one of these groups. Another name that I'm interested in is Pure Storage. Didn't get much attention on. Um, did not get much much attention on earnings day, right? Because it's a it's a little bit of a smaller cap name or kind of second tier grow, uh, tech growth name. But holding the gains here, and you know maybe this thing could could. Um, could actually break out. So I did start a position there as well. Um, we talked about the home builders. There's a bunch of other home builders I can get to, but I'm not going to. Um, one, you know, that's again, not as expensive as some of the other growth names or tech names is Dell Computer, Dell Technologies. Watch for this thing, you know, right around 5720, right? So again, try to take what the market is giving you. And if it's going, if a name like Dell, I know it's not as exciting as a as some of these names that jump 10 bucks you know dell's not going to do that for you right but you could try to size this thing up a little bit more um because it doesn't have that type of volatility and right now with the vix this high i i don't mind trading something like a dell and squeezing out a couple dollars um build you know building your confidence a bit in a tough tape and um and then getting ready to kind of play and and some things that once they have take or finished taking a break may kind of recollect themselves a little bit all right um some of the uh, a couple other names that i'm interested watching watching is the appropriate word um was 
Snowflake, you know, no position here, but I'll, I would be interested if this thing could climb out its side of value. Um, in the cyberspace to um, Palo Alto, I, I, I looked at this thing a couple times today. I didn't jump back into this one. This was a nice winner for me about a week ago. Um, I'm watching 544 for that one. So again, patience is a, is the probably one of the big uh, themes of this video that I'm trying to throw out here. Let these names do what they're going to do. Um, you know, we could tell by these MOC imbalances, right? These market on close imbalances, which I think there was another four billion for sale. There is still a lot of institutional selling going on. Let this take place. Like let let them do what they're doing, these big institutions, because um, they are pushing around the market. L let them can you know finish selling, right? Until they get to a point where they're. Um, where they're not overexposed and feel more comfortable and can start adding back risk. Um, now, I don't know when that happens, and I think you just have to kind of um, let it uh, take place. Um, again, today was a strong breath day, which I, I always go over the breath when, when it's a weekday and complain about it. Um, but today was a strong day, but I, I need to see some follow-through because the way that this market has been going, it's been poor, you get a bounce, poor bounce so i i need to see a little bit more and i need to see the vix get lower here's my final thoughts for the day as this video is about 21 minutes but um you know energy builders airlines steel banks industrials transports they were the outperformers of the day we do get a jobs report tomorrow so that could shake things up a little bit more so um stay nimble uh, i could tell you uh, the, the last thing i will say here in this video i promise is that um being nimble you know i, I would have loved to to come in and profit on in all these areas of the market that were up today but i feel much more confident i can sleep at night right now uh, right now and uh, and I love being nimble and and you know being being able to kind of move in and out of names right now with not a lot of exposure right and not have to worry about a big book of positions right now and just be able to analyze this market objectively and notice where there's relative strength where there's relative weakness um, and and go from there all right guys have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow